Welcome to my Grey Hack Guide. In this episode, we are going to make enhancements to the Decipher tool. So, the default Decipher tool has some limitations, and, and we're going to see if we can make it slightly better. I've already done some modifications, so I'm going to show you the end result, and then we're going to um, make it together. So the decipher tool can now take the uh, hash uh, as an argument. So here we got the password for that hash. Uh, as you can see here we have the file uh, pass in the root folder and it has a bunch of different uh, hashes. And the decipher tool can now take the uh, pass file and decipher all of them uh, instead of uh, deciphering one and then you have to select another one, like the default decipher tool works. So uh, those are the uh, changes. Uh, let's see if we can uh, get started and build it together. You will find the um, source code for the decipher tool in the manual, uh, like I showed here, uh, help. And then um, down here in other commands, you can find the cipher. You click on the cipher and open the source. And, and this is what it looks like. Let's get started. Um, the first thing I think we need to do is... Um, make it so that the uh, param0, which is the argument we give the um, the cipher tool, um, we want that to be either file or the hash itself. So we can do if um, so put this one first and then if file so, um, you get the um, get shell, this is the shell on our computer, host computer, this is the computer object on our computer, and then file, gets a file, and the file is the, um, th this is parents1, the argument we give it, so um, this is the path to the file, and if it's a file that exists on the computer, it's going to give a file object in this variable. Now we check if there is a file, then, then we do else if, then we do else, and then we do end if. This is going to uh, enable us to first check if the uh, variable or parameter we gave the command is a file then it launches this part of the script otherwise else if uh, if the org file dot len is greater than 32 then uh, so a md5 hash you can actually make that 33 actually um an MD5 hash, let's show this. So let's do X as all. So here you can see some uh, hashes. Now, uh, the hash itself is 32 characters, always. Then there's always a comma. Uh, I mean colon, sorry. And then there is the uh, username, bank, password, uh, bank address, uh, no, bank number, or whatever else you have. And that means that including the uh, colon, there's al always going to be 33 characters. Then there has to be some kind of username or bank number. So therefore, it's at least one more. That is why we say if the input, uh, which is the orange file, 
uh, if the length length of that is greater than 33 then we know that we got a uh, this and something else so at, at least this much was put into the uh, command usually you're not going to have that long um uh, well that doesn't even matter so if it's a file then it won't check but if it's not a file then it will check if it's that long and if it's that long it's going to think uh, or at least handle it as a hash so if it's a file then it does something if it's uh, probably a hash then it does something or otherwise it will uh, exit so can't find whatever we put into the uh, decipher then we have a couple of lines down here these two we'll just put those in the file down here or up here because uh, that is how we want the uh, uh, we only want these two lines to run if it is a file so Um, let's see here. So if it's got a file and it does not have read permissions, then it's going to exit and say we can't read the file. If it's, um, if it's empty, well, like if the content is nothing, zero, the length of the con content is zero, then it also exits and says no user found. So that's fine. Then this line we also want to add in the file category and I think that's all we need to do here then if it we think it's a hash then we do lines equals to and we put brackets around it because that is going to turn it into a list so uh, this line up here uh, it gets the content of the file and it splits it by every new line so uh, th like this is one line this is one line this is one line so every new line it splits into a um, a uh, uh, well it turns it into a list so the first line is uh, object zero the second one is uh, list object uh, one, two, and so on. And since we want the variables to be handled uh, the same way uh, later down in the script, we will um, put the hash that we put in. Well, we are handling it as a hash. So let's, let's just assume it's a hash. We are putting the hash into a list as well which is exactly how the program handles the file. Okay, and next up, we... Well, I think that's actually all we need to do for that one as well. So... Yeah. Now all of this down here is kind of useless for most of it uh, because of our... Um, restructuring so what we will do is we will do for for line in lines and four and that's just a for loop that's going to loop through all the lines now this one only has one object so it's only going to loop once uh, while uh, these um, uh, files can contain more than one as you saw in the example down here we had six of them and what the program did was it deciphered all um, six um, and one after another so that's what we're going to uh, assume that it could either be one or it could be several and therefore it's going to uh, do that in the for loop in the for loop we want to put something like this we'll just grab these two lines um and we replace this by just line 
So it's going to use the line and split that by the comma. And then it saves that in a list called user pass. And then it's going to use the function up here, get password, uh, send the user pass uh, to that. And then the function returns password if it found the password. If it didn't, it will return. We uh, exchange the uh, exit here for return. If we keep the exit here, then it will. And if one of these are corrupted somehow, then it will exit because it can't decipher and it won't continue deciphering the other passwords. So we'll put return here instead. So we can continue deciphering. And uh, it's not actually the file path. So we'll just remove that error message or edit it to be decipher wrong syntax, which it is. Uh, for example, if somebody put in uh, uh, a miss a hash with a missing part like if this part was gone or if there was no um so maybe that's not gonna give the same error but let's say that somebody didn't put in this part it only put in the hash then you're going to get decipher wrong syntax okay so now it's going to split it and put it into the function. What else do we have here? Um, like all of this is to select um, one of these for deciphering. And since we're deciphering all of them, uh, we don't need this code. So most of this is just going to be removed. Um, but... Yeah, select user. We don't need that. But we do need this. Let's put that up here. Uh, if not password, then exit can't find password. And if password, then print password found password. Now we don't want to uh, print uh, can't find uh, exit. We don't want to exit can't find password because then it won't continue the for loop. We need to change that for print. Let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, I think most of it is done. Uh, now, password found, uh, it says if password, then print password found. Uh, since this one returns decipher wrong syntax uh, as password, or, well, get password is the function. And as you can see here, get password returns something into the variable password. So it's possible if there is some syntax uh, issues for this function to return decipher wrong syntax and if it does then it's going to say password found error wrong syntax uh, which is weird so we'll just remove this and have it re print password so that's what you saw here it didn't print password found it just prints the passwords and if it has syntax error then it prints that instead Okay, so if not file, we don't need that, we don't need that, if len, yeah, we don't need that, we don't need this, we don't need, let's see here, I don't think we need that, yeah, we don't need this, okay, so a lot shorter and more flexible so uh, enhancement all around i think we're ready to test it and see if there are any issues okay that's one issue so since i protected my computer i need to open a code editor with root permissions 
let's do that. We'll just copy the code into a code editor that has a root permission, which you can see by the colored outline. Then we'll just close this. No, we don't want to save. And we'll save this instead. And we'll just uh, save the over the decipher. So now we're replacing the decipher with our new decipher and we're going to test it. So let's just grab a hash right here. And we do decipher and it deciphers it. Perfect. Then we'll try uh, this text, text file with several um, no. decipher pass and it's deciphering all of them. Perfect. What happens if there's only one of them? Then it's going to decipher that one. And it's going to say decipher wrong syntax because there's a new line down here. If we remove that, then it's going to just decipher that one. Perfect. And what else can we try to see if it's working? We'll copy this one. What happens if this one is wrong? Can't find password, which is correct. What happens if... Um, if this is missing... Command not found. Oh yeah. Decipher, let's see here, yeah, decipher can't find, that's correct, what if it's decipher can't find, so it does require a bank number or username of some sort, and now it tries to decipher it, but that doesn't exist, so it says can't find password, perfect, I think it works, um, I hope you like um, this edit. Uh, hopefully you will have some use for it. It makes the decipher tool a bit more versatile and uh, also more compact actually. So I hope you like the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.